Soil is an important factor to look at when observing the different habitats found at the celery bog. It is one of several things that determines what plant and animal life can be found in an area. Soil is made up of five components. Inorganic materials such as sand, silt, and clay. Organic materials such as decomposing plants or animals, water, air, and very small microbes. The different properties and amount of each of these components found in the soil are what make one type so different from others. Most soils can be broken down into different layers called horizons. Scientists have a special system they use to name each horizon that uses a single letter to identify each different horizon. For example, the topmost horizon is labeled O. The second horizon below that is labeled A. The A horizon is the topmost mineral horizon, which is the horizon which is dominated by organic matter. Organic matter is the material which is the most important component of the soil. That's the component that's going to hold nutrients, going to hold pesticides. That's where the microorganisms hang out that carry out all these functions in the soil. They hang out in the A horizon. Organic matter is the nutrients found in the soil that come from both living as well as dead and decaying organisms. Organic matter can be both animals and plants, such as squirrels or the leaves that fall from the trees. As we move down from the top two horizons and come to the third, or B, horizon, we begin to find more clay and rocks in the soil, along with less organic matter. Usually, we are only able to see the top few horizons when we dig into the ground. At the celery bog, there are two distinct soil types, wetland and woodland. Wetland soils are those found in and around the marshy areas and the ponds, while woodland soils are those found within the wooded areas. Sometimes, near the water's edge, one can find a combination of these soils. When observing the different habitats at the celery bog, you will find that the savanna, prairie, wetland, and forest soils all look a little bit different. This is in part because of the different amounts of sand, silt, and clay found in each habitat. One of the functions of the soil in the celery bog is to sustain plant life. Soil helps determine what kinds of plants can grow in an area. For example, the soil in the wetlands is much wetter than the forest soil. Therefore, plants that are able to thrive in water are more likely to be found here. In contrast, most of the soil in the forest area is less wet than in the wetlands and contains more air. The soil in the forest also contains many more sediments. Sediments are pieces of rock that have been broken into many small pieces. Soil, such as that found in the forest at the celery bog, came mostly from glacial till, which is the leftover soil from the glaciers that covered the area many years ago. The landscape at the celery bog did not always look like it does now. About 16,000 years ago, glaciers covered the area and flattened the land. However, another force of nature, erosion, has taken over since then. Erosion is the process of wearing away of land. Like many other things in science, erosion is a process. When water is present in an area, the water flows to the lowest place and often it will take some of the soil with it. Erosion works to flatten the land by taking soil from a higher elevation and moving it to a lower elevation, evening out the difference in height. Eventually, the wetland will fill in with soil that is eroding away from the forest area. When we talk about soil erosion, I also 
I talk in terms of it being the number one uh, environmental issue on a volume basis uh, because of the sheer amount of soil erosion that's going on. So the big concern, actually there are two concerns. One is the impact on crop productivity and the second impact is the impact on, on water quality. Although this process usually takes thousands of years, there are smaller, dramatic examples of erosion happening all around us. Even though erosion is an ongoing process, plant roots help slow it down. There is a unique relationship between soil and plants. While the soil serves as a home for plants, the plants give back not only by reducing erosion, but by replenishing the nutrients such as nitrogen and oxygen in the soil. Although the celery bog contains different types of soils, all of them serve the same functions for the plants that call the bog home.